What's going on, YouTube? So over the last couple of years, Hyundai has really gotten serious about crossovers. But amongst all the launches, this Santa Fe is the most important one. This is Hyundai's bread and butter, which is why even though this was just fully redesigned last year, they are not resting on their laurels for 2020. Of course, we do want to especially thank our friends at Gates Hyundai in Richmond, Kentucky for giving us access to this fully loaded Santa Fe. And if you're in the market for any new Hyundai, make sure you stop by their dealership or visit them via their website, which we provided a link to in the video description. So with that all said, let's see what's changed for 2020. So right off the bat here, Hyundai has made some big adjustments to the trim structure to make it align with the way that the new Palisade is set up. SE and SEL are still around, but SEL Plus has been eliminated in favor of the SEL with convenience package. The previous limited trim is now known as the SEL with premium package, and the previous ultimate trim will now be referred to as the limited. But anyways, once you get past that confusion, you'll see that nothing much has changed as far as the exterior design. It still exhibits Hyundai's newest sculpted design language, but with one small revision. This darkened chrome trim is now included on every limited, not just certain colors. That trim piece connects to the headlights, which are undoubtedly the design characteristic that stands out the most. Like the Palisade, the elements are split up into just the daytime running lights at the top, the actual headlights and turn signal in the middle, and then the fog lights down at the bottom. Your daytime running lights will always be LED, but you'll have to get the SEL Premium or Limited before the headlights and fog lights become LEDs. Moving on to the side and back, the athletic and sophisticated design continues here as well. The taillights particularly look very nice since they are LED and have a cool 3D look here on the Limited or the SEL Premium. Finally, you have a silver bumper with a single exhaust pipe on the right side. So overall, Hyundai did a great job of walking the design tightrope by making it stand out, but not in a way that is too polarized. Now moving on to the wheels, there are a few different options, of course, depending on the trim. What we have are the 18-inch contrast alloys, which come on the SEL with convenience package and above. Now you can actually get 19-inch alloys, but only if you get the optional turbo engine. And then the SE and SEL both come standard with 17-inch rims. Next up, we have the mirrors, which are always power adjusting, manual folding, and heated with turn signals coming on the limited and up. But for 2020, it is noteworthy that blind spot monitoring is no longer standard, so you'll need to get at least the SEL for it. However, despite that change with BSM, all of the other active safety features are still standard on every Santa Fe. That includes front automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, and auto high beam headlights, which is certainly an impressive suite of features. But anyways, that covers all the exterior details and changes. So now let's go ahead and move inside. So on the Santa Fe, the vast majority of the trims will find the smart entry system uh, with this really nice key fob that Hyundai makes. Um, all but the ba very base SE will have this system. Um, you will notice that remote start is not on the key fob like it is on the new Palisade, but it is still available via the Blue Link app. Now to get inside the vehicle itself, uh, Hyundai does not put a sensor behind the handle, so what you do is just press this little black button. All right, so checking out the cabin of the 2020 Hyundai Santa Fe. As you can see, it's got a really upscale look. Of course, the same as last year since it was just fully redesigned. 
Now as far as your colors and materials are concerned, uh, Hyundai does keep it very simple. So on your SE and SEL models, you will have a cloth seating material. Um, but when you go up to the SEL premium package model or this limited, that's where you'll get the leather. Um, and then as far as your color choices, you've got three available, black, beige, or gray, and that's across all of the trims no matter what interior material you select. Now turning over here to your door trim, it is very nicely finished. As you can see, you've got a really nice leather at material that goes all through here with the color contrast stitching. You've got this really nice textured material, and the top part is also nicely padded. As far as your windows, they are one touch auto up and down for your front two uh, driver and passenger. And you will also notice memory seats, that's limited exclusive. Now turning over here to your seat, only the base SE is going to come with a manual seat. Um, all the rest of the trims are going to come with an 8-way power seat with 2-way lumbar support, except for this limited model which adds the 4-way lumbar support as well as the really nice power thigh extension. And then like I already mentioned, this of course is the real leather seating. It does feel very nice. They have a really a good uh, mixture of materials with the perforation through here and the color contrast stitching. Uh, and definitely looks very good. So obviously just coming off of a full redesign, you're not going to see any big changes to the design or the materials of this cabin. Um, so they do continue to be very high quality. Now across your very, very far upper part here, this is hard touch, but all the lower and more accessible pieces, these are all soft touch, including a nice leatherette material through here with the color contrast stitching. And you also notice that same textured uh, material there. It does flow seamlessly off of the top of the dash onto the door trim. Going down, you also find more nice materials. So you have a nice leather uh, area for your knee to rest against with more color contrast stitching. And then the actual fit and finish is excellent. Now on all but the very base model, you do have push button start. And when you press it, you'll notice a touch display fire up on all the models. It's usually seven inches, but on the limited only, it is this higher resolution eight inch display. Now what we're looking at right now is one of my favorite aspects about the Santa Fe, and that's these really nice uh, reconfigurable gauge cluster here. It's standard on all but the very base model, and like I said, it is fully reconfigurable. So you can just uh, click through various different features here using the steering wheel mounted buttons, and you can just cycle through all types of information. Um, it just has a really cool design. You saw the uh, startup animations, for instance, um, and it, there's just a lot of different features that you can do with it. Now that does bring me also to one of the 2020 changes, and that's that we now have the blind view monitor that first debuted in the Palisade that's now here on the Santa Fe Limited only. So what happens here is when you signal one direction or the other, it works in both directions. You'll see a little camera pop up here to show your blind spot. And it is worth noting that this does not take the place of blind spot monitoring. You still have that system as well, so it's not, a, it's not the same as like a Honda's lane watch system which you would take the place of the blind spot monitoring. But anyways, beyond that we do also have a head up display to accent the main gauges. Uh, this is also limited exclusive. Now coming back to your steering wheel, of course you do have electric power assisted steering. And the steering wheel itself is leather wrapped on the SEL convenience package model and up. Now as far as the buttons, it is your, just your traditional buttons here. So you've got your phone, voice commands, as well as audio controls. Then on this side, you've got your buttons for your cruise control, as well as this button to cycle through your multi-function display. As far as your wipers here, they are rain sensing on the limited only. And the steering wheel itself will always be manually adjusting, but it, it will also be heated here on the limited. 
Now moving on to the very important topic of interior storage. The Hyundai Santa Fe has definitely done an excellent job. So we'll start out under our center console here. As you can see, you've got a little tray right here. This is removable. And underneath, you've got a really large storage area with a nice felt lining at the bottom. In front of that, they've included another very large storage area, two cup holders. And then in the very front, you have this huge storage area right here. Um, as you can see down at the bottom here, we have a, the Qi wireless phone charger. That actually has expanded availability this year and now comes on the SEL convenience package model, which is equivalent to the previous SEL plus model. Um, and that used to not have that in 2019. But if you don't have a phone that uses that, you do still have all your traditional connections here. So you have a charging USB, a regular USB, an aux jack, and a 12 volt out. Now coming back to the shifter, this is just a traditional shifter, so there's nothing complicated here. Pull back for drive, bump over to the left to shift manually. However, there are not any paddle shifters on the Santa Fe. Now when we head into reverse, here on the limited model, you will notice another nice feature. Um, and that's that we have the 360 degree camera system. That is only here on the limited. It does have a lot of different views you can switch between, so you've got your traditional stuff, corner views. Um, all of them do have active trajectory, as you can tell, and we also have front and rear parking sensors. Now, as far as your other models, of course, you will have a regular camera, um, but you will also have rear parking sensors on the SEL convenience package model and up. And you will also notice that the mirrors tilt down to help you see the parking lines better. And another nice feature is that all the models, even the very base model, come with the electronic parking brake as well as the brake hold feature. Now as far as the other buttons around this area, this button here turns on and off your parking sensors. This turns on and off the auto start stop system. And then we also have a drive mode selector. So when we change through a few different drive modes here, we have comfort, sport, and then a smart mode. And as you can see, it does change the design in the multifunction display here, which is certainly a very cool touch. All right, so our next step up the dashboard is gonna be our climate controls. Now what you're looking at is the dual zone automatic setup. This is standard on the SEL convenience model and up. Um, and they've done a really excellent job of making this very ergonomically sound. All your buttons are located physically here. So you've got two big dials to adjust your driver and passenger temperature, fan speed buttons here, zone button. Um, so everything's just nicely laid out. You don't have to go up in the display or go searching for any of the features. Now right below that, you've got your buttons for your climate controlled seats. Um, now you will notice you have three stage heated seats. That's actually standard on the SEL model. So you can have the heated seats without the dual zone automatic climate control. However, the ventilation, that's limited exclusive. All right, so now that brings us up here to our audio system. Now I actually could not find uh, the speaker count or the specs on the bass sound system. However, the vast majority of the models actually come with the upgraded system, surprisingly. Um, that's a 12 speaker Infinity audio system with 630 watts, and that is standard on SEL convenience and up. So like I said, that is the majority of models. So let's go ahead and take a sample of that. I'm really impressed by the sound system. Like I said, uh, definitely excellent that they include this on so many trim levels because it sounds like something you'd expect to only find on the top end model. Plus, uh, models with this sound system do have these really nice looking speaker grills and that's simply not a touch that I expect to see in this class of vehicle at this affordable price point. 
But anyways, now we'll go ahead and take a quick look at the Hyundai Blue Link system. Now since this is the same Blue Link system we've seen in all the recent Hyundai models, I'm just going to run through this real fast. Um, but I'll just go through some basic functions here. You do have a home screen and you've got different sections that you can click straight into like your Bluetooth audio. Um, you can also hit here the all menus. This is bringing you to all your different applications in a list view. Um, so you'll notice a few important things I want to point out. That's going to be Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Um, those are standard on all the trim levels, not just the models with this big display. Um, and I believe Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are newly standard to the base SE model this year. Now as far as integrated navigation, we do have that here on the limited model. Um, right now the SD card is not installed, um, but we do have that. It is limited exclusive. That's really the main features I wanted to point out. However, we do have a dedicated and really detailed tech help video available for those of you who want to learn more. A link to that video will be in the description. Now heading on up here, we do have an auto dimming mirror. Um, as you can see, you do have some built-in Homelink Universal remotes, um, as well as a compass and some blue link buttons over here. And then one really nice feature is this very large panoramic moonroof. Uh, this is actually standard on the SEL Premium model and this Limited. Um, and as you can see, it's really, really large. And this front portion opens up a lot larger than a normal moonroof would. And you will also find a windscreen as well. And while it's closing, you'll probably be noticing here um, this cloth material. This is a special cloth material. It's reserved for the limited only. It definitely gives a really unexpectedly upscale look that, uh, like I said, you just don't expect in this type of class of vehicle. But overall, really, that sums up how I feel about the Santa Fe in general. Um, this cabin just gives you a lot more than what you expect at this price point. Uh, Hyundai is really good about always doing that, um, and the Santa Fe is no different. You just have so many features and a lot of unexpected luxury while still having a price tag that undercuts the competition by thousands of dollars. When you turn the vehicle off, you will notice that the seat scoots back to help with easier entry and exit. Now also uh, worth mentioning, no one has been in and out of the back seat yet, um, but we do have the rear seat reminder system standard on all the models. Um, and that would go off if somebody had opened and closed the rear doors. All right, so that does it for the front areas. Now I'll go ahead and hand it off to my brother Mason who will check out all the back areas. Alrighty, so heading around to the second row of the 2020 Hyundai Santa Fe, you are going to find a really large amount of space. You'll find 41 inches of rear leg room and 39 inches of rear headroom, which like I said is a massive amount of space even for its class, uh, at best the Nissan Murano and is on par with the Ford Edge. Now turning over here to the door trim, it is a very nice design, Hyundai has not uh, cheaped out on the materials back here, so you do have a leather wrapped portion all the way through here does have color contrast stitching and I also really love this speaker grill. Now above that you do have a power window. It is not automatic though and on this limited trim you do have two stage heated rear seats. And above that you do also have a rear window sunshade which comes on the SEL convenience and higher. And turning over to the seat itself it is a really nice design. It's leather wrapped, very comfortable and it does also slide and recline. Now here in the center, Hyundai has given us a lot of nice features as standard equipment. So you will find these vents on all of the models, and down below that you will find a little storage compartment, as well as plenty of power outlets. So you do have two smart charging USB ports, as well as a household style outlet on this higher end model. Now here in the center, we do have a fold down armrest. It is have cup holders in the end. And up top, you will find one of my favorite features about the Santa Fe, and that's this beautiful panoramic moonroof. 
it stretches a really, really long distance. It actually goes behind the second row seats. It really helps air out this cabin. And off to the side, we do have an assist grip, as well as some LED lighting and a coat hook. Now, as far as the space is concerned, like I said, uh, this is one of the largest offerings in the class. You're going to find 41 inches of rear legroom, so uh, behind your seating position, you are definitely not going to have any issues, and my feet can easily slide up underneath the seat. Now the seats themselves do fold 60-40 split, so in order to fold them, just grab this little lever, and they do fold right down. Now coming around to the tailgate, it is hands-free power on the SEL convenience and higher, so all you have to do is just stand back here and it will open up. Now inside the trunk of the Santa Fe, you are going to be pleasantly surprised with the amount of space once again. You're going to find 36 cubic feet of space behind the second row seats, and that expands to 71 cubic feet if you fold them. Now like I said, that is a very large amount of space, especially for its class. It's right in line with the Murano and the Ford Edge as well. Now as far as how Hyundai finishes it back here, it is finished very nicely. We have a carpeted floorboard all the way through here. And off to the side, we have a little storage cubby, as well as a 12 volt power outlet and buttons to uh, electrically fold the second row. So as you can see, at the touch of a button, you can fold the second row seats. And that is a very nice touch. Very few in the class will give you that. And underneath of the floor, we do also have plenty of storage. As you can see, we've had uh, quite a bit of stuff in there. And there's even a second compartment right here. So if we open this up, you will find plenty more storage. Uh, these are actually very deep, probably 10 inches deep. And as you can see, there is three of them. So you can fit a lot of stuff up under the floor of the Santa Fe. Now coming over to the passenger seat, it is eight-way power on the higher end models. Now in front of the passenger, you do have nice materials, as well as a nice little storage cubby right here. And the glove box opens up to give you plenty of space. It is also dampened. And up top, we do have a sun visor with a mirror and light. And it does also detach and extend. But anyway, guys, that sums up all the rear features of the 2020 Santa Fe. So now let's go ahead and get on the road and see how that engine performs. All right, so let's go ahead and briefly talk about the powertrain. Um, now, this vehicle, it does come with two different options as far as your engine. The vast majority of models come with this configuration. Um, this is a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine. And as far as the power, it's gonna be producing 185 horsepower and 178 pound feet of torque. Now Hyundai does also offer a two liter turbocharged four cylinder for those of you who want a little bit more power. That's available as an option on the SEL Premium and the Limited only. Um, and that's gonna be making 235 horsepower and 260 pound feet of torque. No matter which one of those you choose, uh, you've got the option between front wheel drive or all wheel drive, and it's always gonna be paired with an eight speed automatic transmission. And then finally, the last thing to mention here is your fuel economy. It is definitely class competitive. Um, so these are numbers are quoted for front wheel drive versions of both engines. So with the base 2.4 liter engine, it's gonna be rated at 22 city, 29 highway, 25 combined. And then with the two liter turbo, you're gonna go to 20 city, 25 highway, 22 combined. So that's pretty much it for the specifications. So let's go ahead and take it out on the road. Now right off the top, I'm going to go ahead and mention the auto start stop system since it being really hot outside and the climate control being on, it doesn't actually uh, activate all the time, just if, if every now and then. Um, so we'll go ahead and take a sample on how that goes. 
Yeah, restart is certainly very smooth. There's no vibrations mm -hmm. into the cabin or anything. And with some music on or whatnot, you wouldn't be able to Definitely hear notice. the engine at all. So first taking off in the 2020 Hyundai Santa Fe, 2.4 liter engine, um, power is uh, pretty good, now this is not going to knock your socks off or anything, and one thing you might notice is the fact that the rivals we've been mentioning, the mid-sized two-row crossovers, Mur Nissan Murano and Ford Edge, uh, they do actually come standard with a V6 or a more powerful turbo four-cylinder than this model does. Now, however, what's very common for this model is it actually gets cross-shopped with, with the class below, which would be like the RAV4, Nissan Rogue, Honda CRV. It often gets cross-shopped with those vehicles because of the price tag is totally competitive with that, even though it is a class above. And that's kind of what this engine is aimed at. This is the most common engine. This is what people usually opt for because it uh, is a great value. You can get a model like this one fully loaded. Here we are at 37 before we ever even apply discounts or anything like that. So it's certainly a great value in that regard. But anyway, circling back to the engine itself, you know, if you're worried about it, power is still plentiful. The other thing I'm really enjoying, especially out here on this country road, is uh, this steering and handling combination. It's surprisingly good. Um, this, the steering has a really a natural feel to it that is frankly uncommon for this class or many crossover vehicles. They usually have a lot more lightness to them um, and they're really numb. This, I have a really good sense of where the wheels are placed and it's not so light that you're just kind of like turning and you don't really have any sense of what's going on. And it is paired with a really well-balanced chassis. You can just kind of feel it. I'm sure Mason can yeah. attest to it when you kind of go around these corners and stuff, we stay pretty flat. We're not leaning and rolling. And I mean, I really think that in the class below, I think that a lot of those have a lot worse of a you know, body roll and stuff than this. And this is bigger. I think so as well. Now, uh, I did mention it earlier in the video, but you can kind of see it in action here. Uh, the blind view monitor that is all new for 2020 and it's on the limited trim. And as you can see, it does activate even when we're at the stop, but of course the idea behind it is really when you're moving here and you can really keep a good eye on your blind spot and it just pops up right there right in the middle. Um, unlike Honda's Lane Watch, which would re both replace the blind spot monitoring, which a lot of people didn't like, and also pop up in this display, which yeah. is kind of, you know, it's out of the way. It's not in your line of sight. This to me seems like a much more well integrated system because it's right there, right in front of you. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's on both sides and does not replace your blind spot monitoring. And also just kind of cruising down this road a little bit. Uh, I do want to comment on just how comfortable this car is. As you can see, we just hit a bump. Uh, and this vehicle is very, very comfortable inside. Um, as we've been saying, you know, this really is a class above what most people cross shop it with. Um, and you're going to definitely notice that in terms of ride quality. It feels like a almost like a luxury car in here. Uh, I'm very comfortable. The seats are comfortable. And it just really is a quiet and comfortable place to spend time. 
I just want to kind of return back to the steering, handling, and overall balance, just because I'm, I'm really quite impressed by it. Honestly, this is all that you could ever wish for in this segment of vehicle. We also have some drive modes here. We will switch. We were in the smart mode, but what we'll do is switch into the sport mode, see how much of a difference that makes. Definitely uh, really ramps up the throttle response. We're certainly a lot more aggressive on that. Um, so you just barely get into it and we shoot straight off. Um, the gauges do change, I did mention that already. Just have a cooler, sportier design. Last thing I want to mention here really is uh, the transmission performance. This is 8-speed automatic. It shifts very smoothly. Um, there's not any type of uh, jerkiness and it seems to have a good shift logic. But overall, um, definitely really impressed by the way that this Santa Fe drives. Uh, in, a, in a similar way as, as the whole entire car. It simply delivers more than you expect um, at this price point. You know, you're getting just a, a more substantial car than a, a lot of the other things that you can buy for this type of price tag. Alrighty, and now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the pricing. Obviously, with any Hyundai, you are going to find a lot of value, uh, especially for its segment. So, for the very base model, uh, it's going to start at $26,995, uh, which is up $150 over the 2019 model. And that is worth noting that that is including destination. All of these prices will include the $1,095 destination charge. Now, if you want to go up to the SEL trim, that's going to come in at $28,745. The SEL with convenience package, it's $30,995. The SEL with convenience and premium package is going to be $33,745. And then finally, you have this top end limited trim, which starts at $36,745. Now, if you want all wheel drive, that's going to be an additional $1,700. And if you want the two liter turbo, that's going to be $1,850. On the SEL premium or limited only. Correct. Now, like we mentioned, this particular model is the front wheel drive limited with the base engine. Uh, and we do have a few little accessories to go along with that. Uh, so we have carpeted floor mats for 135, as well as a tow hitch for 395. Uh, and then when you add in the destination charge, which is included in what the price I already told you, uh, this particular model comes in at $37,275, uh, which is pretty much top of the line for a Santa Fe lineup. Like I said, you can't get the uh, optional engine and all-wheel drive on that, um, but this is fully loaded as far as the trim levels go, uh, and it still represents a great value for all you're getting in here. Absolutely, and like I mentioned at the interior part, um, you know, a lot of people cross shop this with uh, vehicles in the class below it, actually, um, and that's something you can do because this is that affordable. Well guys, we hope you enjoyed watching this in-depth look at the 2020 Hyundai Santa Fe Limited. Please hit those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already, and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.